Hey, this is Ramon, Channel S Alpha 4 IV, and this is Chapter 8, God Remembers. So, the first set of divine commandments after the flood. The flood wiped out everything. The only thing to survive was Noah and his family, and the animals that they saved. And I'm going to assume the fish were fine. I'm going to assume the fish made it. I'm just, call it a hint. I think the fish made it through the flood. But everything has to be started all over again, and that includes the traditions and the commands. Everything has to be reformed and everything has to be restated. So what you get here, first off, is God's promise. And you get a priestly origin for the ritual of sacrifice. And here, Again, we see the clean and unclean animals. Now, in the flood story is where you really get the idea of clean and unclean for the first time in the Bible. Although there is an argument to be made that the idea of kosher and non-kosher goes all the way back to Genesis with uh, to Genesis 1 and 2 with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge where everything that is in the garden is kosher except for the tree of life and I mean except for the tree of knowledge so the tree of knowledge and all the plants are kosher while the tree of knowledge is not it is unclean and therefore it is forbidden so you can make the that argument that kosher goes all the way back to there I'm gonna stick with the Christian Catholic interpretation that unclean and clean comes from the flood store okay now from that point we now have sacrifice, okay? And that sacrifice is important because it's going to set something up. But it's also a restatement not only of sacrifice, but also a restatement of the curse. And the curse here is that the ground is cursed. And that has double meaning or even triple meaning because cursed and ground can also mean Adam. So Adam is cursed, but Adam can also mean that humans, that humanity is cursed. So man is cursed, humanity is cursed, the ground is cursed. And so to alleviate this, you have sacrifice. You have sacrifice both in gratitude and you have sacrifice in um, to continue things going. And after a flood like that, you want to keep things going. So what the goal of ancient sacrifice was, was to preserve the cycle or to preserve the order of things. And after a great disaster, you want to make sure that the order of things are working because everything just got thrown out of whack. And then there is about the place that they landed. Okay, so the place that they landed is Mount Ararat. There is no literal Mount Ararat. But there is an Aratu mountain range in North Iraq. And this would have been the, in Northwest Iraq. And this would have been the highest point in the biblical world. So as far as the biblical people are concerned, this is as close as you can get to heaven. On earth, the highest you can walk up is the Mount um, Aratu mountain range. And you also see another idea here. And that is the idea of the remnant. And if you're familiar with uh, Baptist or Protestant preaching, uh, the idea of there must always be a remnant, there must always be a survivor, is very strong. So here, the, survival, the survivors are the earth itself, the animals, and the people, the family. Here, the Hebrew family. But... These, this family is going to represent the entire population of the earth. So there, was, there must always be a remnant. So there will always be something left. No matter how corrupt everything else is, there will always be something left that survives. So there you go. That is going to be the flood story. And next, we got a restatement of the covenant. So let's look at our first covenant coming up next. Talk to you guys later.